presented by the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. based on a teaching from the greatest life ever lived. A gray sea and a gray sky, and a small vessel runs before the wind like a frightened animal before the smell of smoke. The wind whistles ominously in the sails, stretching them taut almost to the bursting point. The captain of the vessel holds fiercely to the great rudder, and looks up to address the assembled crew and both passengers. Men, as sailor and captain, I've sailed the great sea for more than 20 years. But I've never seen a sky like this one, nor felt a sea so treacherous. Now we need a good man, one who can approach God for us and pray. Is there such a man among you? Well... Captain. Yes, Elijah? It's not for a man to say of himself that he's good. Will it be enough for your purpose if a man has tried to be good? God would listen to such a man. Then I could pray for us. Do that, sir. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those... Captain, what kind of prayer is that? I'd like to hear something about saving this vessel, getting us safely to Cyprus. Phineas, I find this a good prayer. Tell me, Elijah, was it something which just came to you? No, Captain. Not long before we sailed from Galilee, I heard the master teach it. He said a great deal on that day, a great deal that I shall never forget. The storm will break any moment now, Phineas. Elisha, you two passengers had better be ready to lend a hand if we call on you. In the meantime, Elisha, pray for us all. all the time, Elisha. We'll never come through. Elisha, I'm speaking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of some of the things I heard the master say. They seem to comfort a man at a time like this. They do, eh? Tell me, what made you take this journey? Matters of business? You seem to be a man who could afford to hire someone to take such a risky journey as this. In most matters, I send others. But where so much is involved, I had to go myself. You're, uh, carrying that much gold? What? Well, how did you know I carry gold? Well, I presume that's what would be so important to make you go on this mission by yourself, that's all. I see. And what makes you take this journey, Phineas? May I ask that? The same thing. You carry gold, too? No. But there are certain things a man must do for himself and by himself. But now, hadn't you better get your gold from its hiding place? After all, it would be a pity for so much gold to be at the bottom of the sea. Perhaps you're right. Maybe I could help you. I don't think I'll need any help, thank you. All right. Have it your own way. You two, you passengers! Be ready for the worst now. The sails are gone. I can hear you, Captain, but Elisha's gone to get something. And I'm going to help him. Sea water. 
off this one and let his limp body drop from this piece of wreckage. Dead, that's uh, right. Huh? Uh, what had happened to me? Where but... Oh. It's you, Phineas. Yes, Elisha. I, uh... I saved your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Phineas. Where are we? Where are the others? Gone. The ship broke in two. I seized you and tied you to this piece of timber. And now, since there's just the two of us, we might as well settle the business that brought me on this voyage. What do you mean? Why do you think I came along on the voyage? Because I like the sea air or salt water or being tossed into an angry sea? You mean you came along just to rob me? If we'd landed in Cyprus, I'd have had your gold within half a day. But now I'll have to take it this way. Hold still. I want to untie your money pouch. You drop a man now, here, adrift in the sea? I never let anything interfere with business. Now hold still. All right. When I get back to Galilee, how they'll laugh when I tell them. Robbing a man afloat on a timber on the great sea. <laughs> You wouldn't dare go back to Galilee. <laughs> and why not? I should have to report you to the authorities. I believe you should. If you're alive. What, what do you mean? Did you think I just happened to have this rope in my hands accidentally when the ship broke apart? I was coming to find you. And the gold. This rope was meant for something else beside lashing a man to a timber. You were going to strangle me? The sea takes all kinds of corpses. There, I have the money pouch. Now, I'll just untie this rope. No, please. You have the gold. Why kill me? Is it necessary? If I want to go back to Galilee? Wait. If I promise not to return to Galilee, if I promise never to try to find you, would you let me live then? I don't know if I can believe you. I give you my word. Besides... Neither of us knows if we'll ever reach land safely. Why kill a man who may die anyway? And then have blood on your soul? For no reason. Now go talking about souls. But you're right about one thing. We may never reach land. And the man alone by himself on a timber in the sea. Well, all right. I let you live. For now. <laughs> I was right, much as I hate to be. Neither of us shall reach land. Yes, that's my kind of luck, all right. The first time in my life I ever get my hands on gold, a great deal of gold. And I'm going to die. Die. The gold means that much to you, does it? You tell me. The gold means so little, how did you... Happened to amass so much of it by accident? No. Man works, engages in business, seeks some degree of worldly comfort. That's so. But that gold should drive men to steal, even to kill. Each man has his own way. You had yours, I have mine. And perhaps they differ, because you don't know the one thing that matters more than anything else. Gold matters. Luxury matters. Having what you want in life matters. That's all. Oh, there's more... There's something I heard the master say. He spoke that prayer you said on the ship? Yes. And on the same day I heard him speak the prayer, he said many other things, too. It was a fair day. That was good. For so many had gathered to hear him. There were old men such as I. And children, too. And the master looked down at us and said... Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, 
and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yes, he spoke those words. Did he? Well, it's funny. <laughs> Very funny. I <laughs> think so. Yes. You laid up treasure and I stole it. Just as the master said. <laughs> Did you stop to think that it applies to you, too? That you might take the master's word to your heart? I did my share. I'm the thief, and I stole, just as he said I would. <laughs> Phineas, there's not much time for either of us. Another day, perhaps, that's all. You could change before it's too late. Change? Why? For the sake of your spirit. Spirit, eh? You think I have one, too? We all have. And for the sake of yours, give up your hatred of me, of everyone. Don't keep harboring murder in your heart. And that will save my spirit? It would help. Well, maybe if I did. May... Wait. What is it? Wait. Maybe it's a mirage. Maybe I can't believe what I see, but... There's land. Land. There, see? Land? I don't... Yes. Yes, land. Come on. We've got to reach that island. Got to. dragged you down in the water. Yes, but I came through. And I do have the cold besides. Thanks to you, I suppose. I couldn't let you drown. Now, Phineas, perhaps you can understand in a small way what the master meant when he said, where your treasure is, there is your heart also. You risked your life for the gold. And it almost killed you. Look, you. We've got dry land under our feet now. Let's have no more talk. Oh, a little while ago, I thought you were beginning to understand. We're not adrift any longer. And one of us has gold. A great deal of gold. Now I'll find people here and buy food. on this godforsaken island. Godforsaken? There's water here, Phineas. God placed it here. But what else? A few trees that don't bear fruit, a brook, and a shore covered with seashells. There's no one on this island, no one. No food to buy. Not even any to catch. I've seen no animals, no birds. No. There seems to be us and the trees and the gold. And the gold's no good now. Well, I won't give up. I'll eat grass, herbs, roots, anything, but I'll stay alive. And I'll get off this island, too. Fire's dying. Dawn's here. And no one saw us again. No one. It's been a week. Even more, who knows? I've lost track of time. 
Then we'd better start gathering what we can to eat. Grass. Fit for animals, not men. Kept us alive so far. Yeah. So let's get up and drag ourselves toward the trees where the grass is. And the... Elisha. What is it, Finney? Get up. What's the matter? Just get up. There. Now, look across the island to the other shore. There. Oh, yes. But I... Sail on the shore. A boat for the sail. I wanted you to see it. And say it before I said a word. I thought maybe I was going out of my mind. It is a sail. You did say that, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Then come, come. You see him too, don't you? Yes. He walks along the shore and gathers certain of the shells and carries them back to the boat. We should call to him. No, don't do that. The main thing's the boat. And the way he walks away from it. What do you mean? Nothing. Phineas. Yes, what is it? Phineas, you wouldn't think to steal the boat. Would you? Never mind what I think. You would leave him here alone, as helpless as we are now. He won't be alone. You mean... I know you promised never to return to Galilee, never to tell the authorities, but I don't trust you, Elisha. I don't trust anyone. That boat means freedom to me. Because it's so small, it means we're closer to the mainland than I thought. And that boat's going to take me there alone. Wait, Phineas. Wait, nothing. I'm going to run for it. Phineas. Phineas, don't do it. Don't. Look, the man's seen you. He's running for the boat. He won't stop me. He's not big enough. Wait. What are you doing here on this island? Stand where you are. I want that boat. And I'll kill to get it. No, you can't. You can't leave me here. You can't do it. Phineas, no. Don't strike him. Phineas, no. hasn't stirred. Not at all. Friend. Friend, can you hear me? Uh, you... You won't hit me again, will you? No. No one will hurt, hit you. Don't be afraid. Uh, uh, you're not the one who struck me, are you? No, I'm not. Uh, uh, that hurts. Badly. I know. Uh, he hit you not once, but several times. He wanted to get the boat, to get away from here. And he did. You were shipwrecked? Yes. But you, why are you here? The shells. They are most unusual on this island. Four times every year I come here to gather them. Then I sell them in the marketplace in Cyprus. But never have I seen anyone on this island before. No one even knows of it except me. You mean we'll never be rescued? Not till your friend comes back. He'll never come back. He will. He won't. I know him. He will. I know the sea. What do you mean? From this shore over many miles of water is Cyprus. But it is treacherous water. Only a man who knows it well can guide a vessel through it. Your friend will be back, if he lives. See, Elisha, I told you, the tide has carried the vessel back. But I don't see Phineas. Look, extending over the side of my boat is a man's hand. Your friend is in the boat, exhausted perhaps, even dead, but he's there. Phineas! Phineas! The hand moves now. He's setting up now. Phineas! The silent... The same cursed island again! No! Amos, that 
water. It sent the boat round and round. I fought against it, but I, I had no hand with boats. Finally, I was exhausted. I, I just laid down and let it drift. And the next morning, you were back here. Yes. It's a trick, some cruel trick fate has played on me. One must know the sea. Oh, Demas. Demas, you know it. All right. I'll give you gold. A great deal of gold. Get me off this cursed island. It can never be. What do you mean, it can never be? Gold, look. Look here, I'll show it to you. Let me untie this pouch. There. There, gold. Well? No. You struck me. Meant to kill me. I will not take you back now. Only two men will leave this island. You? Elisha? Yes. Why not me? I'm giving you gold. One does not risk one's life for gold. And the boat can carry only two men in safety. It's small. It's never carried anything but me and the shells before. All right. All right, the two of us, you and I. We leave Elisha here. What do you say to that? No. For half the gold? This man is my friend. He tended the wounds you inflicted on me. I could not leave him. Three quarters of the gold, then. No. All of it, all of it. Here, here. Take it all, every last coin. Only get me off this island. No. Not for this gold, nor even for more. All right, then. All right. None of us leaves the island. I'll watch. If I see you try to leave, I'll kill the both of you. But no one leaves this island alive unless I go with them. You understand? Elisha, he has not stirred. Not for quite a time now. Then he must finally be asleep. Two days, the way he watched us, guarded us. We could sleep, but not he. And now it's too much for him. He sleeps at last. He's exhausted. Wait. It may be a trick. I must make sure I'll nudge him. Eh. He didn't move. Didn't move at all. He is asleep. This is the moment I've been waiting for. The boat on the shore. Finney is asleep. That means escape. Escape. Follow me. Elisha, why do you wait? Why don't you come with me? Our time is short. Our opportunity is now. Come. Demon. You go. But to you, I can't leave you here. If you go now, you go alone. I can't leave you. Can't leave any man to die. But I told you it's too dangerous for three men. Besides, why should you think of him? He's a thief, a murderer, if need be. I couldn't do many men to death here alone, deserted. I couldn't do that. And face the master again? If you don't come with me now, you may never have the chance again. I know. Still, I can't desert him. You must understand. Deep inside you, there is the same spirit. Else, why didn't you take his gold and leave me? Because you are my friend. He can be your friend, too. Our friend. The boat is not built for three men. The water is treacherous. I cannot leave him. You really won't leave him, will you? No, demon. I see. Well, then I must take the risk with you. All right, we'll wake him. We'll try to make it with him, the three of us. And trust to God to bring us through to safety. maneuvered an overloaded boat in that swirling water. It was an experience to watch it, to be part of it. I know now what you meant about having it, having to know the sea. Soon, Phineas, if you keep an eye there, in that direction, you'll soon see the first green cliffs of Cyprus. We're that close now? We are. Elisha. Yes, Phineas? You heard. Land soon. Very soon. I know. Why didn't you leave me there? On the island? You could have. I was asleep. Didn't even wake when you first shook me. 
You could have taken the gold, too, and I never would have known. Why didn't you just leave me? I couldn't. Yes, I know. That's why there's something I must give you. Here. The pouch of gold. Yes. I, uh, I want to give it back to you. And I ask for no bargain to be made this time. It's yours. It's not so much of a treasure anymore, is it? No. Since we've been on this boat, in the dangerous moments when I thought it would capsize, I... I realize that you and Demas could have made this voyage in safety without me. Instead, you risked your lives to... to take me with you. And then I realized... Gold wasn't such a treasure after all. It couldn't buy me food or water or rescue or even life itself. I'm glad you know that now. Maybe I could change. Maybe a thief could find a new life in the master's words. There is time to change, isn't there? There is time. And maybe those words of the masters are a good place to begin. If you seek to change. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm -hmm.